Welcome to One on One. I'm Steve Adubato. Uh, this has got to be, you have to be one of the most fascinating people I've ever spoken to. People are going to find out in a second. She is Melina McCall. She is the co-founder of the United Tastes of America and Syria Supper Club, which is? Which is an organization that sprang from one event, which my partner Kate McCaffrey and I uh, set up in response to the uh, xenophobic and Islamophobic rhetoric we were hearing in the area. But there's a food connection here, because there you were is. saying right before we got in the air, you talked about food justice, there's a whole bunch of food issues. What, is, what do food issues have to do with Syrians, Syrian refugees, et cetera? Well, rather than the food issues, it's the power of food to bring people together. We all eat. It's a nice common ground at which to meet people. And uh, we wanted to bring people together and create connections and show support of, our, at that point initially, our Muslim neighbors um, to show that there were people in New Jersey specifically who did not agree with then Governor, well, he still is our governor, but Governor, governor Christie's, Christie. Governor As we do Christie's this program, yes. Yes. Uh, comment in um, November of 2015 that uh, no Syrian refugees could come to the state. Um, we wanted to respond, and we wanted to respond in a positive way. So we brought um, people together. Uh, our very first event, we didn't know it was our first event, we thought it was an event, um, was a Christmas Day meal, a traditional Jewish Christmas Day meal of Chinese takeout um, <laughs> with, <laughs> with uh, Jews and Muslims in a synagogue, and in what fact, like? the broader community as well. What it was, was it like? fantastic. What um, made it so great? The thing that makes all of our events great um, was first shown there, which is people's uh, wanting to uh, show a hand of friendship. And so people were just wanting to be there. There was a tremendous atmosphere of warmth. Um, we work with trust all the time. So as it turned out, we ended up with 10 recently resettled Syrian families. And their first foray into New Jersey was coming to a synagogue. Um, and that was a big leap of faith for them. And uh, we had people who gave up their Christmas, who do celebrate Christmas, and they said, we want to be here and, and show solidarity. And so that atmosphere, as the underscoring background to the evening, made everything else magnificent. Whether the food was magnificent or not, it didn't really matter. It tasted great. I guess it's like manna in the desert. It's what you want it to be. You know, it's so interesting. In my family, <clears throat> it's largely Italian food around holidays, and we try to avoid speaking about politics because it never goes well. But apparently, when you get together, you talk about all kinds of things, like? We do, um, but we also encourage people to not leap straight in and, and expect a resettled family to tell mm. their, their backstory. Uh, in the same way that you wouldn't go to a party and ask somebody who you hadn't met before but had heard they had gone through something traumatic like a divorce or a terrible illness, you wouldn't say, hi, I'm Steve. I hear you've had a bad divorce. Tell me all or about it. Or a loss it. of a loved one. You wouldn't or, do it. You, would, you just wouldn't do it. So. Um, so we tend to encourage people to find the connecting uh, points of, of conversation. And food is um, not only a, a great way to come together, but also a great conversation starter. So our Syrian uh, cooks prepare the food, and it's mm. their food. So they're preparing it with great love and with a positive cultural background that comes in the food. And then our American guests who are at the table, uh, when they're sitting and conversing, a great starting point is something that they're eating. They can Where do you excuse me for interrupting. Where do you find people on all sides for this? So, um, by the way, do we put up the information, Jen, so people can find out more? Good. So, for our on the Syrian side of things, um, and right now we're working primarily with Syrians, but we do have a couple of Iraqi cooks and an Afghani cook as well. Um, it started with that event I told you about um, two, two Christmases ago, um, where we had these 10 recently resettled families. And we started visiting them, and every time we visited them, they fed us. Um, and my partner, Kate, and I uh, were rapidly expanding and decided we needed somebody else to eat the food, too. Um, but we also saw this as, as a great opportunity uh, for, for um, our, newly, our new neighbors mm. to uh, sit at the table as equals and to be um, actively involved in determining their future in a positive way. So we invited them to prepare the food. And we started with the people we knew and word spread in the community. We, get, we started with, we knew 10, and we now have over 50 cooks. Where do you do, <coughs> excuse me for interrupting, where do you do it now? Where are the events? The events are held in uh, people's homes. Um, we were very deliberate about that um, because we wanted to 
create that intimacy and that feeling of safety and comfort that a home brings. So we'll have an American host, um, an American host who opens up their home for it. And then the Syrians who are bringing the food, they're kind of hosts as well because they're providing the food. So we all sit together. But we've expanded beyond that. We mm. do corporate events uh, for, for often for staff or for staff and families. Mm. And even though those are much larger, we still manage to retain that uh, feeling of intimacy and connection and connectivity, partly how we uh, open the evening with an introduction and uh, a little talk. And um, people get together and, mm. and they mix. We bring in an interpreter, um, but we also use, encourage people to use their phones. Uh, Google Translate is our, we call it our frenemy because you never quite know what it's saying. No, it's not always exactly the right translation. It's not always <laughs> remotely what you thought you were saying. So there's another leap of faith there. L let, me, let me do this. I'm curious about this. Your, your healthy obsession with food and the power of food. It's really, as you said, the power of food. Give me the most concise response you can to this question. What is the power of food in bringing people together, particularly when you're dealing with Syrian refugees and the misconceptions around it? Loaded question, I know. It enables us to personalize the impersonal. So my perception, for example, of uh, the Syrian refugee crisis could have been what I see on the TV, on media, what I read in the newspaper, the terrible photos, the tragedy, and so on. Um, but I have no real sense of that being a person. Then I have somebody sitting next to me who has made some delicious food. At dinner. And we're having dinner together. And I can ask about the food. And maybe she will choose to share that she used to make this with her sisters back home. And I'll get a sense of that. Or she'll talk about her kids. Or maybe her daughter helped her. Or maybe her, her husband is the official taster. Um, something like that. And suddenly, it's not this. Um, impersonal concept of a refugee. It is a real person mm. who maybe had the same background, had, had things that were similar to me uh, in their past life. Maybe they didn't, but we do have points of connection and food is one of them. Last question. The future of your, of your organization, which is doing so much to help so many. Go ahead. So we started with our one one-off event and from that we then had two dinners, which we thought was <laughs> going to be it. Um, in our first year uh, of the dinners, We've had over 250 events, fed over 2,500 guests, and now have over 50 cooks, all raring to go. Um, we are in the process of incorporating as a 501c3. A not-for-profit organization. A non-profit organization. And we um, are planning to have a commercial kitchen, bring the cooks in there, set up professional training, incorporate uh, English as a second language in the workplace so that you have the context of where you're learning so you actually are able to learn. And uh, just from this, not necessarily create employment for everybody who is uh, working with us, but create the confidence and the dignity, a dignified path mm. to them being self-sufficient and being contributors to our society. You are making, <clears throat> excuse me, a very big difference, a significant difference. We thank you for everything you're doing to bring people together around the power of food. Thank, thank you so you very much. much. Appreciate it. Thank you for having us. This. As one on one, we'll be right back. Thank you very much. One on one with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by the Russell Berry Foundation, RWJ Barnabas Health, Fedway Associates, the Fidelco Group, Caldwell University, Suez and by Adler Aphasia Center. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.